uh, to me, that it all starts with relationships. Man, that's so great. You know, one of my favorite sayings is find close hearted people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know my favorite poem. I know my favorite song. I know my favorite books. I don't know them by mind. I know them by heart. Yep. And it just, boom, it resonates, right? So that goes down to that core value. You know, you put those things out there and it kind of, it digs a little deeper inside of you and says, hey, these are some of the things that I believe. These are some of my principles. These are the attitudes that I share, right? Absolutely. And it shows that it gives that little glimpse right there. Man, that's a great idea. I'm going to steal that. I really am. Yeah, absolutely. Please do. Please yeah. do. One, okay, so the most recent books that I've been reading through is Xenophon's Cyropedia, which is the education okay. series. Great leadership book from the standpoint of reciprocal love of relationships in between not just warriors, but leaders. Good, strong-hearted people remain Absolutely. good goodness was a huge effect of the Cirrus empire and so on and Cirrus, i mean he he conquered essentially from egypt all the way across and north to south and what is modern day middle east Cirrus is the same king who released the jews and sent them back to israel these leadership principles as mattis nice. would say nothing's new under the sun this is this is a book a text that was written 2,500 years ago, 3,000 years ago, now that I think about it. And then just recently, I finished the pamphlet, War is a Racket, by Smedley D. Butler. You like Smedley okay. Butler, General Butler? Nice, nice, Heck yeah. very cool. He had the Brevet awesome. Medal and two Medals of Honor, 33 years of service. The guy definitely knew what he was talking about. And I yeah. think he would be very proud of these two Marines right here. That's because awesome. Because when he was leading the 500,000, in essentially what is a march, the World War I veterans in Washington asking for bonuses and all of this other stuff. What do you think he was using as the template in order to be able to lead these things? The operation yeah. process. Absolutely. And, and what we're doing, Smedley talks about a defense force rather than a foreign war military force, which, you know, the guy's a general, I'm going to pay attention to what he's talking about. He served a heck of a lot longer than I did and in a heck of a lot more wars than I did. You know, so it's one of those things where a lot of us who are picking up the mantle as veterans, as business leaders who are applying a lot of the same military leadership management methods. And it's interesting, too. I don't know if you're the same way I was in the infantry, but the only way to be able to get anything done was by building relationships. That was it. Because most people hold. think that that's a big misconception. A lot of people think that we did the job because we had to. Not at all. We we could we could deny those orders at any time. And and one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in leadership is it is sales. Leadership and sales are the same thing. The only difference is in the military there's no transaction. I don't swipe a credit card, but I decide to follow the people that are that are leading me. Uh, with every with every order with every execution we make that commitment and that's our transaction right in, in the civilian what's that yeah that's it's absolutely buy that buy-in and yeah. and you don't have to do it and yes i was in the infantry and i had some leaders that i didn't necessarily agree with oh sure. and uh you know um but yeah i think it's it's interesting to see that and how because a lot of people especially that don't have a connection to the military don't know anybody that served they think we were just blindly following orders and to your point in all the books and everything that you reference it's interesting when you talk about love and caring and heart most people think that we're just these war dogs but how do we how do we conquer you know civilizations we do it because we have a, a heart for humanity that that bleeds deeper than most people um it, we cared more than everybody else it wasn't that we were these you know these spartan warriors and in some sense we were but it's because we we cared more and that's what empowered us to not only do the job but to lead the people to do to do the job with us